Hello and welcome to BE TV. We have with us Mr. Alan Mameri, CEO and co-founder True Caller. Hi Alan, how are you? I'm good, thank you. So Alan, how does the model work for True Caller in India? If I'm not mistaken, one you one side you have an advertising mm. portion and the other side you have subscription. Within subscription you have two kind of offerings which is one is premium, one is gold, right? So could you just give us an idea what percentage of the revenue is coming from advertising and what percentage from subscription and where your bet is going to lie? Yeah, so uh, as you said, we have two revenue streams at the moment, advertisement and premium subscription. In 2017, almost 100% of our revenues came from advertisement, uh, but we launched premium subscription in 2018. And we've been pretty successful, I would say, uh, what you get when you become a premium subscriber is that you get an ad free experience, you get a certain functionalities uh, which is based on trust uh, and creates more safety in communication such as call recording functionalities, you can see who has searched your number and so forth. And uh, 2018 was definitely an interesting year because we went from zero subscribers to 500,000 subscribers. So it's uh, definitely been an interesting and uh, Right now, it stands for around 20% of our revenues. So that's quite a huge jump from nothing to 500,000 subscribers. Yeah, somewhere between 10 and 20. Uh, yeah, okay. You have two kinds of subscription models, right? Premium and gold. Right. What is the difference? Well, the big difference between gold and premium is that when you buy gold, you get a gold profile in True Color. Uh, and it's a niche product. Uh, it was uh, actually a customer feedback we got. Uh, people. Some people really wanted to stand out and, and say, I am a gold member. Um, and the traction has been quite interesting, I must say. And we're going to continue to invest in both the premium subscription and in the gold subscription. Okay. So when you say invest in, as in how do you further plan to build those two properties? What I mean is uh, that we're going to spend more time on the product development. Uh, we're going to uh, increase the teams to make sure that we can work even faster on the, on the roadmap. You also have True Caller Pay, which is the wallet that allows you to do transactions through UPI, right? Could you give us an idea how many users, what kind of transactions that take place? Uh, some data point because, uh, yeah. uh, I mean, wallet is a huge space where you're playing in in India. So we're actually not a wallet. Yeah. Uh, we're using the UPI stack sure. to make P2P payments and okay. also pay bills, etc. So we, we uh, launched it last year. Uh, with the acquisition we did of uh, Chiller and uh, they joined our team and to, to rebuild the whole pay uh, product that we have. And uh, we've been very successful on that part. We recently, last week, announced that we now reached um, 100 million daily active users in India. 10% uh, of them are now also on the, the payment product. So, you know, they connected their UPI uh, bank account uh, to to transact and to check balance and so forth. So we're going to continue to invest in the product and, and put it where it makes sense. Because we always believe that transaction and conversations goes hand in hand. For example, if you, if you buy something from someone on OLX, there's always a conversation happening. And TrueColor is an important part of that conversation because we add a trust layer to that conversation. Who is this person? Is it a trustworthy person? And payment is in some way just a feature of that and we want to make that experience more seamless and we've come pretty far in a short period of time and, and we're very happy and proud of the progress. But you will restrict yourself to P2P and not get into stores also? Right now we have um, a P2P, P2U, P2M uh, but we only do online at the moment but we're elaborating and looking into offline type of payments as well. So when you say offline, would you be partnering with stores and getting setting right. up the QR code? I mean, like we've seen in the past or something different? We, we think uh, it can be done in a better way without QR codes. Uh, for instance, just scan a phone number sure. and send money. Mm -hmm. And the interesting part is um, on the payment product that we have, 60% of our uh, users who has connected their UPI accounts mm -hmm. have never been on UPI before. And the reason is because TrueCaller is big in the tier two and the tier three cities. And many of our customers are small business owners like mom and pop shops, the barbers. And these are the people that we think we can help uh, and, and enable payment in a more efficient way that hasn't been done before. 
So we have a good reach, we have a good opportunity to, to help those. You know, you have a huge database. I think your database is priceless at this point in time because every second person uses Truecaller, right? Uh, but privacy is also a huge concern at the same time. Mm. So what, as a company, you take into account to ensure that everything is private, there's no breach of privacy, you always also have an advertising-driven model, right? Mm. And again, data protection. I am scared to give away my phone number because I get barrage of text throughout, yeah. in and out, right? So as a company, how do you protect my data or how do you ensure that privacy is kept intact? So first of all, Truecaller has always been restricted in a way that no one will be able to find your number by searching for your name. Okay. So they have to have your number. Uh, and when someone texts you, you can always block them using Truecaller and you will know who they are. So we, we have, there are so many cases where we have created trust in the society. We have solved um, uh, criminal cases or you know the, the police has done it using our platform with phone numbers um, so I think uh, from our perspective privacy has always been the most important thing and it's not really we don't really look at it from a regulatory perspective we look at, at it from a trust perspective because the moment you lose the trust of your customers then you don't have a business and coming from Europe from Sweden Privacy has always been, that's what you grow up with. Uh, so we've always wanted to build a, a product and a model where you can always rectify your data. You can always unlist it, you can take it back, you can delete it. So that is important to us. And from, you know, if you look at the, the changes that are going to happen in the regulatory data privacy acts, we, we definitely believe it's a good thing. Uh, we, because that's what true color stands for in some way. And we've always been pro those and making sure that, for example, um, all data that we process and that we store, we actually store it in India. Yeah. And for several reasons. One is you're closer to your customers, which means the experience becomes faster. Instead of sending you know, requests to another country, it just takes more time. So from that perspective, we find it really important. But for us, it also it's also a, a way for us to tell our customers that we, you can trust us. We will follow the regulatory yeah. that uh, makes sense. And to be frank, we're even, bef we're even a few steps ahead of you know, many other companies. No one forces us. We thought it made a lot of sense. I think you guys also introduced messaging on the app, mm -hmm. right? Will we see you making a social shift, con getting into content, or giving it a wholesome content feeling also because ultimately, I mean, everybody is getting into content. It's, yeah. yeah. There's a blurred line between a tech company and a content company now. <laughs> yeah, I think there are enough of uh, content companies. Mm -hmm. uh, not saying we will never do it, but there is no plans at it, uh, to do it at the moment at least. So what was the idea behind that messaging portion of the app? Our users in India, they receive around 300 SMS messages per month. It's a lot of text messages. And you know, half of them are either transactional or spam, right? And most of them are spam. It's carriers and all that. So what we did was that we changed the SMS experience. We categorized the important SMS messages in one folder. Um, the transactional and those that are important to you, like bill reminders, goes into another folder. And the spams, we don't even notify you. So the same experience we brought on calling, we brought it on messaging as well. So we started with SMS and now on top of that, in November last year, we enabled True Color Chat. So the experience is similar to how iPhones work uh, with iMessage, oh. that you send an SMS if the person is not on True Color or if the person is, then it goes for free or data and you can see if the person has read the message and all those perks that comes with it. So for us, it just made a lot of sense because we wanted to clean up the SMS inbox that people had. You are expanding your team in India, you just told me, and you're adding more people, largely yeah. techies. So when you look at the vision for True Caller in India over the next three to four years, mm. where do you think it stands? And from revenue perspective also, how much do you think India is going to contribute to your global uh, revenue? So we're going to, uh, actually in December, we, um, our India operations became bigger than our operations in Sweden. Yeah. So we crossed 100 people and we're expecting to grow with another 50 people this year, um, mostly in, in our office in Bangalore, uh, but a few people in, in Bombay and Gurgaon as well. So that's, that's a, a big investment that we are doing. 
when it comes to where we believe, you know, in the coming years, I think what we have seen right now is just the beginning, right? You have 250 million people on smartphones connected in the coming years, you know, it's going to be 800 million. So the opportunity is so big. And I think for us, it's important that we build the best product with the, the people that understands the markets as well. So how big your operations would be in India, say another two, three years? I, I would guess up to around 500 people in the coming years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That would be my guess. Okay. And the kind of role you see True Caller playing in amongst every, in your user's life or say in mm. the life of people? I think we're going to continue to stay, like if I look five years forward, I think TrueCaller will continue to, to stay focused on creating a more trusted communication experience and that's what we're going to continue to stand for. Um, and uh, we're definitely going to continue to bet on the small businesses, on making you know, the, the financial fintech side of it more seamless. Uh, but we're also focusing on you know, with the True Color SDK uh, that you can sign in with your True Color account on other apps, making that experience better, but also take that to the offline world. Sure. Thank you so much, Alan. Thanks for all your time. Thank you very much.